You're listening to Unleashed with the Daxi Chain, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi folks, it is Andy here. Welcome to Unleashed with the Daxi Chain, a Daxi podcast where we learn all about the Daxi Chain and the incredible opportunities it unlocks. Let's get on with the show. Hey folks, it is Andy here. Welcome to Unleashed with the Daxi Chain. This is episode two in our three-part special series of podcasts uh, that celebrate the imminent launch of the Daxi chain. Uh, so in episode one, uh, we talked about, you know, equity crowdfunding. What are the limitations that are holding it back? Uh, we learnt all about the vision of the Daxi chain, courtesy of Ian Lowe, Daxi chain CEO. And we learnt a little bit about the genesis story, the origin story, if you like. Of the Daxi chain. So in, in episode two, we're going to talk more about the power of the Daxi chain, uh, what the network effect is that is going to help drive uh, the growth of the Daxi chain network all around the world. Uh, we'll understand some of Daxi chain's uh, advantages that come from its decentralized crowdfunding model. And well, to learn about all of this, I am, of course, joined again uh, by Daxi Chain CEO Ian Lowe. Hello again, Ian. Hi, Andy. Hello, hello. So this is episode two, uh, Ian, as I've explained. Um, yeah, let's just dive right into it, I reckon. Uh, I mentioned the decentralized model uh, of the Daxi Chain, Ian. So just explain a little bit, please, uh, about what that means and, and what are the advantages or, or benefits, if you like, that this decentralized model brings to the Daxi chain? Yeah, thanks, Andy. A couple of good questions. So to set up the answer to your question, let me just explain briefly what Daxi chain is. So Daxi chain is a, a platform as a service, so essentially a, an underlying set of pipes and capabilities within those pipes that allow equity crowdfunding platforms anywhere in the world, as long as they're licensed, to connect to each other. And the reason they would do that is so that for an opportunity on one platform um, where that would normally only be invested in by their own local crowd on the same platform, that investment opportunity can be shared by that platform with a vast number of other platforms, all of whom have crowds of investors looking for great investment opportunities okay so it's essentially a network model whereby any existing established credible and licensed equity crowdfunding platform can get access to the network through a set of apis that we provide and through those apis they can connect with other platforms and essentially do two things share deals that they're offering to investors to a, a, a significantly larger pool of individual investors rather than just their own crowd. And secondly, they can offer the investors on their own platform a much larger catalogue of investment opportunities that have started or have originated from other platforms in the network. So this addresses this whole chicken and egg constraint which is about getting scale into equity crowdfunding by scaling not just the pool of investors through this Daxi chain network, but also the catalog of investment opportunities. And of course, the richer the catalog, the more attractive it is to investors. So that, that network effect that you've referenced, where we get this compound growth through signing more platforms into Daxi chain, connecting them through our APIs, we grow the pool of investors, we grow the catalog of investment opportunities. Really that compound growth, we believe, will reimagine the scale of what's possible for equity crowdfunding with some really clear benefits that touch the three principal beneficiaries, which is the investor looking to invest, the company that's actually raising the capital so they can grow, and the platform that sits in the middle to to connect those two groups together. 
Yeah, thanks, Ian. And, you know, so this network effect uh, that we're talking about, you know, there's a, I think you and I have talked about this before on, on previous podcasts, Ian, you know, it's a, it's a famous law, it's called Metcalfe's Law, uh, which very simply says uh, that the financial value or impact of a, a network, a communications network, an electronic network, a blockchain network, uh, you know, the impact of that network or the value is proportional to the square of the number of connected users on the network, which is really just a fancy way, Ian, of saying, you know, the larger the network, uh, the more potential value. I'm sure that can make sense to people. So, you know, you've talked about, um, you know, going from uh, local to international and to be, to be able to unlock the scale and potential of the Daxi chain opportunity. So again, just, just in simple terms, explain how that works in, in terms of the network effect. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things you've already referenced um, quite rightly is that we, we are operating under what we call a decentralized network model. So let me explain what that means because it's it's quite significant. So essentially to provide this this network opportunity for independent platforms to plug into to access scale uh, on both supply and demand. There's, there's two basic ways we can do it. There's actually three or four, but let's just stick with two for now. One is a centralized model, one is a decentralized model. So I'll explain what the decentralized model is by starting with an explanation on the centralized model. So a centralized model is where somebody comes in and says, equity crowdfunding lacks scale. That's a big constraint. That constraint is felt by everybody, investors on one side, growth companies on the other. Let's solve that problem by creating a network and let's make that network a centralized network. And simply what that means is that you've got one central party that controls that network. You've got one central party that is essentially aggregating the investors and aggregating the deals. They probably, if not certainly, need to become a licensed crowdfunding platform themselves. They would need to do that in every market of operation that would cast doubt over the ownership of the crowd for each of those platforms. It would cast doubt over the control and ownership of the deals for each of those platforms. And a centralized model would essentially create an unhealthy competition between the network operator under that centralized model and the constituent partners that are plugged into that network, whereby the centralized player is saying, come to me to see the deals come to me to invest and they are actively marketing a, a a different destination to the destinations that already exist in the forms of the participating platforms so a, a centralized model just like a bookings.com or an expedia.com and all of these different industries where we've got a centralized model if not immediately shortly after that is actually in direct opposition of the partners that create that catalog and and actually aggregate those investors so if we look at a centralized model we think that's deeply flawed um equally i think over the journey let's call it the next 10 years players will emerge who are already in equity crowdfunding who will pursue a centralized model and they'll do it by trying to expand into lots of different countries um, acquire and operate lots of different crowdfunding licenses, uh, acquire and look to build lots of different standalone crowds, and then start to find ways to connect those crowds. But in the end, it will still be a centralized model. The decentralized. Sorry. Keep, sorry, 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 to interrupt. Please so keep, the, keep going, Ian. Keep I'm going. I am getting to an answer to your yeah. question, so bear with me. The, the decentralized model is a model that says, we do not want to compete. The network should never compete with the partners that create the network. In fact, far from that, the decentralized model says, at its very core, it says, our job is to make all of our partners spectacularly successful because if they are successful, then we are successful. So this very tight alignment of interest is, is what we achieve under the decentralized model. And the way we do that is the following. When a deal is exposed on a platform in the network, 
and it's therefore by definition exposed to that platform's own crowd by releasing that deal into the daxi chain network that deal is now surfaced inside the platforms of all the other participating um, equity crowdfunding um, players so so essentially what that means is that if i sit in another investor pool inside another platform that's connected to the network then i can see the investment opportunities that originate from other destinations from other platforms in the network i can see it inside my local platform so what we're essentially doing is we're building the connective tissue between all of these platforms that allows them to share deals with each other and then when investors on their local platform participate by investing in a deal that they they didn't own from the very beginning those investors can participate in a much richer catalog of investment opportunities so but we don't aggregate that in a centralized model we actually distribute all of those deals into the platforms that people are already using so it's a very important distinction that has i think very real implications for the potential for daxi chain to really redraw the lines of what's possible for equity crowdfunding Got it. Thank you, Ian. Decentralize all of the things in summary then. Uh, another uh, fascinating part of uh, the potential of the Daxi chain, the potential of equity crowdfunding is, you know, the ability uh, for investors uh, to really drive impact and positive social and economic change uh, all around the world and of course you know locally wherever uh, they might be in the world so you know I, i'd love just to get some kind of big picture thoughts on on how you think um yeah the daxi chain can really help uh participate in driving uh this global positive social and economic economic impact yeah yeah of course so so look what one of the one of the things we talk about a lot uh, inside Daxi Chain every day, we we talk about um, the potential to and the impact of democratizing investing for everyday investors. Right. So this is not just retail investors, um, but it but it definitely includes retail investors, individual everyday investors who want the opportunity just to participate. Um, they're not going to invest in everything. They don't have huge capacity, which of course makes crowdfunding perfect for them because they're not like an institutional investor that are placing very large bets. Um, they're placing much smaller investments, probably in a small portfolio of businesses they feel that they understand. And so really to this point in time, the, the only path uh, to uh, providing those investment opportunities to everyday investors is equity crowdfunding. Um, but of course, it lacks the scale that drives the participation. And what we mean by that is providing a much richer catalogue of investment opportunities where somebody that comes to that catalogue will have an affinity with one or more of those investment opportunities based on their own life experience, their professional experience, all sorts of different things that are unique to them as an individual. So we need scale in both the catalogue of opportunities and the pool of investors to really drive that synergy between supply and demand at scale. And so Daxi Chain is really about providing that, that scale, providing the technology infrastructure to enable that scale. And that scale, by definition, is this democratization of investing by giving everyday investors access to a larger pool of investment opportunities, many of which would typically only be offered to the chosen few that sit around the high net worth or very high net worth table where they get an inside run on the best opportunities. We honestly believe that scaling equity crowdfunding will actually completely reimagine what's possible and in the process democratize investing in private companies high growth private companies for everyday investors 
Fantastic. Uh, it, it sounds amazing, Ian. So, uh, all right, let, let's start to wrap up uh, this episode then, Ian. So, you know, we've talked about uh, the decentralized uh, model architecture of the Daxi chain ecosystem. We've talked about the network effect uh, that will help uh, supercharge the number of participants in the ecosystem. Uh, we've talked about the ability and potential for the Daxi chain to drive positive uh, social and economic impact. Sum it all up then, Ian, you know, it, to me, it starts to sound, if you put all this together, it sounds like a paradigm a shift. And look, you know, we don't want to kind of overemphasize things, but, you know, is that fair to say? Just close out this episode perhaps by explaining how we think um, the launch of the Daxi chain really is a paradigm shift when it comes to uh, equity crowdfunding. Certainly. So, so look, today, and you look, Andy, you and I have talked about this, less than 1% of funding that finds its way into growth businesses comes out of equity crowdfunding. Now, that just, that just has to change. And the only way it changes is through scale. And we've talked a little bit in the last few minutes about this idea of empowering individuals with the opportunity to participate and to do that at scale. But think about the implications on the other side of these investment opportunities. We're talking about uh, founders, uh, high growth companies in the fairly early stages of their life. They've got a proven product or a service or an offering, but to, but to scale that business, they need, they need access to money. They need growth capital. And they're willing to give away some of the business to achieve that, to, to realize their dream. And so on that side of all of these transactions, that's what we talk about when we talk about the innovation economy. This is the way that capital finds its way into businesses with great ideas and great solutions that need capital to realize the benefit of those great ideas. Um, and of course, that benefit can now flow to everyday investors. So at scale, equity crowdfunding truly is a win-win um, where we're not just providing access but we're actually giving innovators access to capital and we're doing it in a way that gives them access to more capital gives them access to capital faster and we think over time it will also start to give them access to capital at a more competitive price because of the scale and so all of those things in combination are not hard to project uh, as we start to sign more platforms and build this network and see the the effect of of that network and its growth. Yeah, really, uh, really good stuff, Ian. Uh, really is uh, about yeah supercharging uh, the ability for people to innovate and yeah get funding uh, for those innovative ideas. And man, the kind of opportunities that that can unlock all around the world. Really exciting future, I think. All right. Well, that is, uh, I think that brings us nicely to the end of uh, episode two in our three part special, uh, really acknowledging and celebrating the imminent launch of uh, the Daxi chain. Uh, so, our third episode will, of course, be coming up next. In our third episode, uh, we will look at the Daxi chain roadmap and beyond what is the future of equity crowdfunding it'll be very exciting please join us uh, for episode three but that is the end of episode two thank you again ian thanks andy